And still on the war in the Middle East, we all know who is behind every terrorist organisation there. The Islamic regime of Iran uses its axis of resistance proxies, so your Hamas, your Hezbollah, your Houthi rebels, to destroy lives and create an unthinkable brand of chaos. We know that the majority of people in Iran reject this and want these dictators gone. But how can that happen? And what can we in the West do to help? I'm so pleased to welcome His Royal Highness, Crown Prince Reza Pahlavi, living in exile in the US. Crown Prince, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'd like to ask you very simply to begin with, why did you leave Iran? Well, actually, I had left uh, Iran six months before my father and mother did in January 16th of 1979. I had just finished high school in Iran, and I was on my way to the United States of America for the Air Force uh, pilot training program in Reis Air Force Base in Lubbock. And it was in the midst of that uh, time that the revolution occurred, and obviously under the circumstances, uh, I was unable to go back to my country uh, as a result. What would happen to you if you went back right now? Well, uh, this is a security uh, issue that a lot of my competitors are concerned with, knowing that the regime is targeting me, amongst uh, other, to eliminate. So, clearly, it will have to be under circumstances that they can no longer bring that kind of harm. Not that I'm not willing to risk my life, but I won't do something stupid either. And uh, I hope I'll be able to find, as soon as it becomes uh, possible, uh, to go back to Iran to help my compatriot and lead a transition to a secular democratic uh, regime. Uh, instead of the current theocratic dictatorship that we have. How would you sum up the people who are in charge in your country right now? And how do you, I guess, feel about the fact that the UN appears to be their greatest supporters slash protectors? Well, Ali Khamenei is, I think, the epitome of evil in the sense that, first and foremost, he couldn't care less about Iran and Iranians. Uh, it never mattered to him or his regime. And sadly, uh, Iranians have been the first victim and hostages of this regime that is basically utilizing Iran's resources, not to the benefit of my fellow compatriots, but spending it on promoting the exportation of their uh, ideology. Uh, using proxies, uh, intimidating, blackmailing the world by taking hostages, by terrorizing them. In short, uh, doing everything that is contrary to the aspiration of Iranians who want to have the same freedoms and lives that you enjoy in free democratic societies, and instead are behind a much bigger curtain than the Iron Curtain during the Cold War. They've been thrown back to the medieval times. Uh, women have uh, are considered half uh, the citizens. Uh. And I believe the fundamental problem that we have had from the get-go, going back four decades, is the fact that most of their diplomacy or foreign policy was based, until even today, on the false premise of expecting behavior change by this regime. This is tantamount to not recognizing the DNA and the nature of this system, that it cannot coexist in the free world the way we know it. They celebrate martyrdom. We want to celebrate life. We value human rights. They don't. There's no point where you can compromise with them to negotiate in a rational way with them. And it's been, as a result, a total waste of time. And adding insult to injury has been, instead of bringing more pressure on it, in fact, appeasement led us to where we are today. I said this a couple of weeks ago on my show that I felt like the moment was approaching very quickly when people in Iran would rise up and, and rid the world of this regime. It, just a feeling. Would you agree with, with the fact that, that that's starting to feel a little bit more realistic? Well, it is absolutely true. The Iranian people have proven to all of us, especially in recent years, that they are resilient, that they don't give up the fight, and are sacrificing their lives every day, even though they haven't had any support whatsoever from the outside world. Imagine what could happen if they actually did receive that kind of support. And yes, I believe that they, they are your solution. They are the guarantee that instead of having a regime that is antagonistic to every values that the free world cherishes, the Iranian people, contrary to this regime, 
are peace-loving people, want to have cordial relationship with their neighbors, whether they are Arabs or Jews or whoever they are. And in order to be able to succeed, we need to be able to achieve what is what I believe the solution is to have a secular democratic system replace this religious dictatorship. For us here in Australia, uh, for a lot of people, the conflict in the Middle East feels very far away, but we are seeing first-hand examples of the kind of terror all over the world, in Australia as well. What would your warning be to a country like ours if we become complacent and we don't stand up to this kind of terrorism? Yes, indeed. There's no time to be wasted. And as I said, if there's a shift of strategy uh, of not wasting too much time on the regime, but instead seeking a solution beyond the regime, there has to be, in my view, elements that can change uh, the, the, the circumstances and equalize the playing fields for Iranians. And I've always uh, asked for uh, world governments to consider in their approach a dual-track approach. One is maximum pressure on the regime and parallel to that maximum support for uh, Iranians. Uh, maximum pressure will be in form of additional sanctions. I think one of the very important issues on the table in Europe, and I think even it's been uh, argued in Australia, is putting the IRGC on the list of uh, terrorist organizations, among other things, but also to be able to help the people back home uh, by means of uh, supporting uh, uh, labor strikes or uh, helping them uh, with uh, communication means so they are not disconnected from the world and many other things. But this is a way to empower uh, the people people, instead of empowering the regime, because appeasement has only empowered and emboldened the regime to the detriment of the people and beyond us, the rest of the region. When you look at leaders all across the world calling and demanding for a ceasefire, telling Israel not to go here, not to go there, knowing full well that the enemy, the terrorists, will never stop, so essentially wanting Israel to just be lambs to the slaughter, how much does that embolden this regime? I always stated that in all of this, we forget the fact that the eye of the octopus has really been the regime in Tehran. You can fight the tentacles up to some point, but as long as the octopus itself is not destroyed, you're not going to have this. Now, I don't mean by that that we should subjugate Iran to external uh, military attacks or anything like that, because uh, that will be something that will not be uh, acceptable to, to all of us fighting for freedom. But instead, rely on your most natural ally and army on the ground, which is the people of Iran themselves. And empowering them would mean two things. A, you eliminate the problem in many of its aspects, whether it's the nuclear threat, terrorism, radicalization, and what have you. But at the same time, you guarantee yourself that you have something to replace this regime with. It's not an abstract. It's not going to be uh, doubtful as to whether or not the Iranian people will have a better course of action. They will. And finally, I, I want to ask you, are you the man to save Iran? Is this your legacy? You know, uh, when I'm called upon by my compatriots, uh, by the basis of their affection for me, they've followed me uh, with my 40-year track record of fighting for uh, freedom and democracy and human rights. They trust me. They call upon uh, me to in intervene. So I'm basically uh, carrying out my duty to them, to serve them in the best way that I can and make sure that we achieve what has been our longstanding dream of uh, achieving freedom and human rights uh, in our country. And that's the beginning step towards prosperity and uh, happiness for my fellow Iranians. Your Highness, thank you so, so much for joining me here on Aaron. Really appreciate it.